A very good morning to you and welcome to the short act of worship on behalf of St John's Scottish Episcopal Church here in Perth. It's a glorious day, I hope it is where you are too. It's lovely that you're able to join us, so welcome to our worship as we praise our God together. Welcome. We're going to begin our worship this morning with our special prayer, our collect for today. So let us pray. O God, our Defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us from all unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading this morning is taken from Psalm 86, beginning at the first verse. Listen to me, Lord, and answer me, for I am helpless and weak. Save me from death, because I am loyal to you. Save me, for I am your servant, and I trust in you. You are my God, so be merciful to me. I pray to you all day long. Make your servant glad, O Lord, because my prayers go up to you. You are good to us and forgiving, full of constant love for all who pray to you. Listen, Lord, to my prayer. Hear my cries for help. I call to you in times of trouble because you answer my prayers. There is no God like you, O Lord. Not one has done what you have done. All the nations that you have created will come and bow down to you. They will praise your greatness. You are mighty and do wonderful things. You alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Strengthen me and save me, because I serve you just as my mother did. Show me proof of your goodness, Lord. Those who hate me will be ashamed when they see that you have given me comfort and help. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
gospel this morning is taken from the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 10 beginning at the 24th verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. No pupil is greater than his teacher, no slave is greater than his master. So a pupil should be satisfied to become like his teacher and a slave like his master. If the head of the family is called Beelzebub, the members of the family will be called even worse names. So do not be afraid of people. Whatever is now covered up will be uncovered. Every secret will be made known. What I am telling you in the dark, you must repeat in broad daylight. And what you have heard in private, you must announce from the housetops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of God, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. For only a penny you can buy two sparrows, and yet no one sparrow falls to the ground without your father's consent. As for you, even the hairs of your head have all been counted, so do not be afraid you are worth much more than many sparrows. For if anyone declares publicly that he belongs to me, I will do the same for him before my Father in heaven. For if anybody rejects me publicly, I will reject him before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the world. No, I did not come to bring peace but a sword. I came to set sons against their fathers, daughters against their mothers, daughters-in-law against their mothers-in-law. A man's worst enemy will be the members of his own family. Whoever loves his father or mother more than me is not fit to be my disciple. Whoever loves his son or daughter more than me is not fit to be my disciple. Whoever does not take up his cross and follow in my steps is not fit to be my disciple. Whoever tries to gain his own will, life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will gain it. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. I wonder which command you think is most repeated in the Bible. Perhaps, love your neighbour. In fact, it's the command we find in verses 26, 28 and 31 of today's Gospel reading. Don't be afraid. Fear itself is the key concept in this part of Matthew. Perhaps because of the pandemic, and recent civil unrest, fear has become an all too familiar concept for many of us. Because today's Gospel reading flows on directly from last Sunday's, I'd like briefly to recall what was said. The passage was very starkly entitled, Persecution Will Follow. Jesus was explaining to his disciples that by following him, they could expect floggings, hatred, persecution, and possible estrangement from their families. Plenty to be afraid of in that. He went on, however, to reassure them the presence of the Holy Spirit would be with them, with whatever words they needed in their defence, before governors and kings. In this morning's verses, Jesus continues to disclose more and more about the challenges and rewards of their mission to the world. I wonder if Jesus was teaching today using grim language like flog and persecute, whether he would be advised to repackage his message to make it more attractive, to focus less on the suffering to reassure the listeners in softer vocabulary. But Jesus' first requirement with the disciples 
is to be utterly honest, leaving them with no illusions about the formidable path they were on and what would be required of them. They will need every missionary characteristic and more to guide and mark them as they carry out God's mission to the world. Thinking about being frank brought to mind occasions when I've heard the honest voice of a child ringing out in words others didn't really want to hear voiced in public. Like the child in church becoming restless as the sermon dragged on and piping up, Mummy, if we give him the money now, will the minister let us go? Many of the grown-ups around that child no doubt nodded quietly in uncomfortable agreement. As we emerge slowly from lockdown, there is no avoiding the uncomfortable facts of what we have gone through in terms of loss and grief, nor of the challenges that lie ahead. Sadly, the advice from some quarters seems to lead to confusion rather than clarity and to scepticism rather than trust. That is why I think this difficult passage from Matthew is helpful for us right now, because the person whose words we can trust completely as we face our fears and futures is Jesus. Nonetheless, the disciples were only human and must have experienced discomfort, if not sheer terror, on hearing Jesus' uncompromising statements about their future suffering. He talked not with words they wanted to hear, but with honest words they had to hear if they were to begin to understand and cope with what lay ahead of them. We all know fear can come in many shapes and shades. Fear can trigger an adrenaline rush that makes us run away from danger. We are taught to reverence and fear God. These, I think, are healthy types of fear. Jesus warns that one thing that truly deserves fear is not harm to the body, painful though it is, but fear of the dark powers that would destroy our very souls. Through our resolute determination to follow the Lord of life wherever he leads, our perseverance and patience will emerge into the light. A judgment day will come when everything will be uncovered. Everything that is presently secret will be made known. Jesus knows that what will come to light on that day will be the disciples and our loyalty and faith. Truth will out, justice will prevail, and those who have lived with integrity and innocence, despite what the world may say about them, will be vindicated. This is the promise of entering the glories of eternity. Meantime, Jesus offers us, in the here and now, confidence and reassurance. God will sustain and animate our lives. The God who demands the disciples all, our all, even when our nearest and dearest do not share our faith, is the God who cares even for the tiniest bird, the sparrow. How much more he cares for us. He even knows the very hairs on our head. And my goodness, there are plenty of those just now. We are not being offered escape from suffering and death, but the understanding that we are always in God's hands. Wherever we are, now is a good moment to absorb the clarity and authority of Jesus' words about fear. Jesus is telling us we need not be afraid, that they, we will be guided and protected, that we are precious in the eyes of God. Although our feelings and bodies might hurt, no harm will come to our souls because God's love and assurance surround us.
And so when we are fearful, let's remember Christ's words in that most frequent of biblical commands. Don't be afraid. We are dear to God. We are held in God's loving embrace. Our souls are safe in God's care. Not only will we endure, we can go on to flourish and rejoice. We'll close with the words from Psalm 86. Let us pray. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you are good and forgiving and abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are with us at all times and in all places. You know us better than we know ourselves. In this time of anxiety and threat, help us to recognise your sustaining presence. Help us to trust you and to reflect that trust in our care and love for one another. As we continue to live with the impact of the pandemic, help us to cope with the anxiety created by the easing of restrictions to our community life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We live in the hope that creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay. Let us enter into that spirit of hope. Sustain and strengthen us in our endeavours to make each other safe, especially the vulnerable and the sick. Empower the workers who strive to maintain our essential services. Inspire those who are charged with taking decisions on behalf of the community. Give them the spirit of wisdom. And so may we attempt to build your kingdom and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be alongside all those who are suffering or who are at risk during the pandemic those who cannot receive medical services, those whose mental health has been affected, the isolated, those whose jobs, businesses and livelihoods have been affected by lockdown. We pray especially for those who suffer domestic abuse, who have been trapped in households where they are afraid and made the victims of violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of conflict, where ancient wrongs have festered 
and continue to brutalize our communities through racial discrimination. Grant us a spirit of compassion and solidarity so that we can learn to see problems of justice afresh, to recognize all our neighbors in the light of your son's teaching that we are all equal in your sight. Let this impel us to seek just remedies that bring our divided communities together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As your creation groans for freedom, inspire us to live more in tune with its rhythms of energy and growth and appreciate its riches. Let our senses be opened to the sounds of birdsong, the sight of an orchid in the woods, or the scent of a honeysuckle. Let us appreciate the riches of our own communities, our bonds of love and friendship. Let us value our own church communities, bound together in the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. Look after your church here in Perth, especially supporting our Bishop Ian, our Rector, Graham, and Annie, our Curate, and all who worship and minister together in our Congregation of St John's. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us spend a moment to bring to God's presence anyone who is on our hearts and minds at this time. Lord, look graciously on these and all our prayers today. Send your Spirit among us so that we can be consoled and be strengthened to console others and to nurture the good seed for your harvest so that the righteous will shine like the sun in the gathering of your kingdom. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. So now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God, Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.